out live live now hi everyone i am jumping on today and going through the yeasted dough fathead dough that we have on the website and also in the cookbook everyday keto and showing as i said i would do manual method just using the microwave you can use a double pot steamer if you prefer and we will be just doing it into scrolls. I thought that would be a little bit easier. Sorry, I got itchy nose. It always happens when I go live. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll be making it completely without any appliances, just the microwave. So hopefully everyone will be able to see how I, uh, how the mixture is, how it's not sticky and how easy it is to manipulate into any shape that you want. So I'm just going to find us here on Facebook so that if I see any questions, I'll be able to answer them. Okay, cool. Okay, so I've got all my ingredients out. Now, the only thing I've done today that is one step ahead is um, I got the yeast starter ready. So I've only just put that on probably less than 10 minutes ago. It was after I'd already put up the post to say to join me at quarter past three. And you can already see it's like into a very thick paste. So all that is in this container here is two teaspoons of instant yeast and one teaspoon of inulin. To, and sorry, and one tablespoon of water, warm water. Okay, so just to explain, instant yeast is the one that you buy from the supermarket. It's not uh, brewer's yeast or fresh yeast. It's just instant yeast. And the inulin is used to activate it. Inulin is not available from the supermarkets yet. Hopefully it will be soon. Uh, but it is available from most health food shops or uh, the low carb suppliers that are online. It will activate the yeast and make it all nice and foamy as you would in normal uh, baking. And the reason we don't just use, because some people will say, oh, well, you can use instant yeast without having like what's called a yeast starter, doing it this way. Um, we need the activator to activate the yeast because there's no natural sugars within, especially within a fat head dough. Um, or low carb gluten free breads because the carbs are, are so low. So usually it uses the carbs that, or can use the carbs that are present in wheat flour, but it doesn't obviously in this instance. And so that's why we use it. And sh sugar alcohols do not work. Okay, so inulin, if you don't have inulin, you can use sugar or honey and the yeast will consume the carbs. Uh, just don't try and do it with any of your um, artificial or keto sweeteners okay because it won't work so I've just done that and got that ahead of time I could have done it in the same time and many of you have seen me do it while I'm doing this but I wanted to work fast today with the dough so it's a short video so that everyone can get to see how it works and um, I have Stormy down there having a little chew and if she arcs up I've got to just throw her a little ear <laughs> anyway okay so in my bowl here today I have uh, so in the everyday keto it is a slightly different ratio of everything. So this one's just a big one because I'm going to do it as a scroll today. Um, so I've got 250 grams of mozzarella and 65 grams of cream cheese. Uh, I just use a Philadelphia cream cheese in most of my cooking. I know there's some cheaper alternatives. I do love it when Philly um, have them on 50% off. But I tend to buy it because it's a firmer cream cheese than the really soft ones that are in the, the cheaper brands. But anyway, I'm going to pop this in the microwave for two minutes. Now, I use a 750 watt microwave. So you can adjust that cooking time to suit your microwave. But I know two minutes is pretty much the standard for me with my microwave. Hi, Danny. Hi, Robin. Good to see you. It's nice to know that somebody's tuning in and watching today. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be a really quick recipe. And what I thought I'd do with it rather than um, just do any of the recipes out of everyday keto is I'm going to, as I said, I'm going to do a scroll. The only other things that I've got in here is I've got some of the Mexican grated cheese that you can buy from the supermarkets and that as well. That usually has like a jack cheese and a bit of a jalapeno cheese in there. I've got some just slightly cooked uh, diced bacon because I had bacon in, the, um, in my fridge that needed to get used up. And I have uh, pickled jalapenos that I've pickled that are sugar free, which is also on the West website. So you'll be able to get that recipe. It's a beautiful uh, jalapeno escabeche. So I love it. And we grow a lot of our own jalapeno, so I'm always making it. So that's gonna be our filling. Oh, and underneath there, I've got a little bit of goat's cheese again that needed to be used up. 
So with these sort of breads, you can use anything that's in your fridge that you need to use up. Like if you've got some olives or cabanasi or uh, chorizo, um, cooked mints, leftover lunch meats, you know, avocado, mustards, pickles, like sugar-free pickles. Uh, a lot of those sort of things go really lovely in a pinwheel or a scroll. And of course, many of you know that uh, I have a very popular <laughs> recipe, which is one with Vegemite and cheese. Uh, I'm a massive fan of Vegemite, so it kind of tends to go on a lot of my scrolls and things like that. Mind you, I don't make them all the time, but today has been a busy day in the kitchen experimenting with different breads. You might actually see over in the corner here, I'm actually experimenting with some lovely hamburger buns. So some little buns that'll be in upcoming recipes and a soft and chewy keto pretzel. So this is a garlic and herb pretzel. So I don't know how many pretzel fans we have, but uh, I've been talking about them a bit lately because I used to make heaps of pretzels back in my cafe days and stuff like that. And that was so popular. Like we would do apple cinnamon, which now you would do like a choco or zucchini with apple spice and um, cinnamon and nutmeg. Or we do, you know, like, yeah, garlic and herb and things like that or jalapeno and cheese. So you can see that this is really nice and melted, right? So I'm just going to give that a quick mix. It's very hot, but it's very much gooey, gooey cheese, okay? So what I'm now going to add into my cheese is in the recipe in order is I have, well, I have my yeast that I want to put in there and I have eggs. So I've got two room temperature eggs here, whole, straight in there. One and a half tablespoons of double acting baking powder. I'm gonna chuck that in there straight away. Now, I'm just gonna give this, I'm gonna bust up that egg and I'm gonna give this a quick mix. Now, what I do is, it's just the wet ingredients going into the cheese. I'm actually gonna come around so you can see this in the camera. So, I'm hoping you are seeing this. I can't see it on my thing. So you can see it all become really foamy. Um, and you can actually hear it foaming. So that actually breaks cheese. Good, I can see it on my MacBook now. So you can see it's like, you know, doubled it or tripled its thickness even. I'm going to spoon in. As you can see, this yeast has no liquid left in it whatsoever. So if you've got wet yeast, then it hasn't been activated and that will give you a wet pastry, okay? Or wet dough, depending on what you're going to use this for. So I'm going to quickly mix that in as well. Try and get it in there evenly. It'll start to actually um, break that foaminess down. So you can start to see it starting to reduce again. And now I'm going to add in my other ingredients. So what I always do when I do mine is there is salt and salt and yeast aren't always friends, okay? They pop their yeast bubbles. So I'm gonna add in my almond meal. Today I'm just doing it with almond meal. Um, and I'm going to mix that in just roughly. Then I've got a teaspoon of xanthan gum that goes in and the salt. So I just use sea salt flakes that's going in there. And I have all of my ingredients, do, 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 except the two things that I'm going to, add, well, the two bowls of filling that I'm going to put in there. And I know it's all done. Okay, so I'm just going to mix this. We're just gonna move this paper for a second. And this is where the work gets done. So it's like some people say to me, oh, the dough's sticky when I go to work with it with my hands. What you're doing first is you're making sure that this dough is mixed in here evenly. And you can see that I'm really having to put a bit of elbow grease into this. And I'm mixing it. Now, what you can't see is like there, there'll be bits of cheese, right? So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to press against the bowl, bust up the cheese, and make sure that that dry mixture is getting put through it. So it's evenly combined in my bowl before it even gets flicked out onto my workbench or onto my silicon mat. Now, I'm sure most of you can actually see that this is like a real dough now. And 
if I turn this out onto my silicon mat now, you can see how it's stuck together. So if you were using a food processor or a thermo cooker of any description, thermo mixer, it would pull together in the center as well. Okay, nothing on the hands. And it's not sticking to my hand either. So if the dough sticks to your hands, you haven't mixed it enough in the bowl, okay? No tricks, that's all it is. So you can quickly knead it into a ball. So if I was going to do rolls or bagels, I'll just quickly show you one. I would weigh my dough. Let's just say it weighs around 700 grams. I was gonna do seven, just for easy math. I'd break off a 100 mil ball. Now what I do is when I trim off my things, I usually use digital scales and I check all the weights. And to roll a ball or a uh, bagel, so let's just say if you're going to do things like my hamburger buns over there, you're actually like cupping over the top of the dough and rolling it in the palm. So it's actually like doing this against the silicon mat. Now what you can see is it's a beautifully round ball. If I wanted to do a bagel without doing it the traditional style, which is a sausage wrap around your hand and then roll it again, I would simply just shape it into a bagel and then place it onto my baking tray. But today we're going to do a scroll. So that was just a little bit to show you if you wanted to do it in that way of making rolls or bagels um, garlic knots or whatever, you would roll it out into a long sausage, which you can easily paste back together um, because the dough is still nice and soft. So I do all this while the dough is warm. If you split this dough and refrigerate it, all I do is I pull it out half an hour or so before I'm going to use it and allow it to come up to room temperature. I always find it's not as, as great to work with when it's cooler or has been waiting like you know for a while because um, yeah when it's warm it's just nice and easy <laughs> really soft and beautiful to work with and you can see like how easy that is like to come out into a um, rectangle and just so again, even with this, you don't need to use a rolling pin if you don't have one. You could use a bottle or you could use like the cake scrapers and that are a really good spreader. And that way I actually find that you can feel that it's um, not even in places and even it out a little bit. Plus also neaten up the edges. So I'm just going to push it out. So what's everyone doing today? Uh, we went out for our walk early today. If you'd seen on my stories yesterday, um, we, we went into Newcastle and walked the Anzac Walk along the beaches. And um, yeah, it was kind of uphill on the way back and it was a warm day. And I was a bit buggered by the time I got home and um, had a little bit of a nap, which is very rare for me on the lounge. I knew I was tired, so I was like, I'm not gonna work today. I'm just gonna chill out on the lounge, had a little sleep for half an hour, and then woke up and watched a movie, so it was nice and quiet, but what's everyone doing? Uh, hate your shipping costs. Yeah, shipping costs, sorry. Um, I'm not sure, oh, San Francisco, yeah, of course. Yeah, Australia Post, it's shocking. Um, unfortunately, there's not much we can do. You can buy any of the eBooks though. Um, and print them if you prefer. So you can print them at your own cost. Here in Australia, oh, I think I've got a tea towel out, no. Um, here in Australia, oopsie, we've got like office works where we can take them and get them um, ring bound, which makes them really good for the kitchen as well so that you can um, keep them flat. But yeah, Australian shipping, unfortunately, not much we can do about it and the books there's not a lot of room in there to absorb the cost of you know, shipping that's almost as the same amount or in some cases more than the actual cookbook. Hi, from Julie. <laughs> the Australian Post, yeah, thanks Margaret. 
Yeah, even in Australia, to be honest, like um, those of you who, who live overseas, you wouldn't even know that like shipping costs, I've seen um, other people doing the same thing as me, charging nearly, well, for the same size book of what I'm going to be sending out now, uh, charging double the cost in shipping. Uh, we are at like one of the higher rates of discounts that we can get and we do pass it on where we can. But anyway, um, oh, prepping teriyaki beef cake. I love the teriyaki. Tonight I'm doing beef and broccoli uh, a different way. So maybe a new recipe if it's any good. Um, I so couldn't let anyone watch me in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, Mitch. Um, look at me. I like have, I'm still like in my workout kind of gear. But yeah, I, I did say that I was going to show this because I often show things in the Thermomix and a lot of people think there's the magic behind it. But I think we've just quickly shown how like this dough is still not sticky and it's just so easy to work with. Um, so I find that everyone seems to respond really well to seeing things live and is more likely to make them. Um, so as much as like, if you hadn't noticed, I'm not somebody that really likes to get in front of the camera at all. I, yeah, I, if you look at it, even say my Instagram, Anyone that I know that's on Instagram that's sort of like doing the same kind of thing as me, nearly every picture is a picture of them um, where mine is. I think there's possibly four, if that, pictures of me over the years that I've been on Insta. Um, yeah, I'm not one to really get in front of the camera or anything like that. And I'm a messy person in my kitchen. So I do things with my hands. So... So what I've just done is I've actually like put the remainder of like I had some Meredith Dairy um, goat's cheese that I needed to use up in my uh, cheese tray and I have some bacon. This is really weird. <laughs> Keto and I have bacon and cheese to use up but like we honestly, we don't eat a lot of it. Um, and I have a whole nother batch of bacon that I'm actually going to have to put through um, in our vacuum sealer and freeze because we just don't eat enough and I'm not even buying nearly the quantity that I used to buy. Um, like I said, let's just say the last one I bought was half a kilo and it was ages ago. Um, but yeah, sadly we just don't go through everything. I think it's just because we we eat more basic now. We just tend to get a steak or something like that. But anyway, so this is that lovely uh, Mexican cheese that I said it's already pre-shredded that's at the supermarket. So I might have a little bit of some kind of fit, um, thickener or something to stop it from sticking to, uh, to each other in the, the bowl that some people mightn't like but you can freshly grate any cheese or put anything in here like often I'll put things like a bit of ricotta with spinach um, and like I said you know you could just do it with mustard and slice meats and do a lasagna roll or something whatever you want Okay, so and that is now all on there. And to do a scroll, so you can see I've just done it basically to my baking tray size. Um, I think I flipped that too because <laughs> um, I didn't measure it. And then what I use, I use the paper to actually begin the roll. And you actually try and roll it as tightly as you can when you're doing it. So you get like more of the scroll so you know either called a scroll or a pinwheel pinwheels are usually done with like a puff pastry or something like that um, and you can do this like thicker if you wanted to um, as in not so thin in the dough so it's like more bready between each one so if you've seen um, my cheese and bacon scrolls see on the, the website they're done with a little bit of a thicker one but I put yeast in this dough which is different than that one so what I do is I usually tend to cut the um, whole log in half, in half, in half, in half. So then I get eight. So that's nice and easy, relatively even. Whoever gets the end pieces tends to get less. So I leave them once for Dave. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Not kidding. Or you can sandwich those two together. Um, but just to show you, so... They don't look that pretty, but they do come out lovely. So it's a nice little scroll with all the layers inside. But this works, you know, well with leftover veggies and stuff like that as well. 
And you can make a decision with this if you like. You can leave these out. You could have cut these thinner as well. So you can, let's just say I'll do that with that one. So, you know, if you wanted to have like mini ones, you can do that. I'll just do it with this one as well. So a mini one. So that's completely up to you. I leave space. Now, I know a lot of people like to um, do buns and scrolls like you do when you're using wheat flour and, you know, they rise up against one another. The one thing I find with fat head dough, even though the version that I make is less fatty and um, bakes more as like a bread style, if you put them together, the dough doesn't dry out. Um, so it's like still wet. So I don't like it like that. So I always leave space for everything to grow on the baking tray and that as well too. But as you can see, like that is like dead easy. Like it took two minutes in the oven, in the microwave. What, less than five minutes to mix and roll out and throw out on whatever and roll it up and pop it on a tray. I could cover that. I've got a beautiful sunny window over there at the moment with my silicon mat, leave it for an hour. It'll give it a little bit of a puff. And then I'll bake it. I'll do that anyway because I've already got other things <laughs> already made. Um, and I've got the time to do it. If you wanted to do any sprinkles, so things that go lovely over this kind of dough too is um, any of like the Italian seasonings, Mexican seasonings, garlic and herb, ranch dressing, uh, everything but the bagel, which is also on our website. So I've just got some of those there here. I'm just going to sprinkle some of those on there because it also adds flavour. Uh, you know, this particular everything, but the bagel has uh, onion granules, garlic powder. Uh, I use nigella seeds, sesame seeds, poppy seeds. I think that's it. Celery salt, which is my secret ingredient in a lot of things. You wouldn't know it. <laughs> like if you, you bought it, you probably have it in your, pan, in, your, in your spice pantry and you probably never used it unless you've made some of my recipes before. But celery salt's an amazing seasoning. Um, but it is salty, so yeah. And that's also got salt in it as well. So it's six ingredients in there. So nice and easy, yeah? Everyone can make that at home. I'll just pop that out of the way. But as I said, like, if you wanted to make those into the rolls, you saw how the rolls were. If you wanted to do it in filled rolls, just press the roll down, pop whatever the filling is. So let's just say we were going to use the cheese and jalapenos and goat's cheese. I would make a flat disc, pop all of that in the centre, fold it up like your money bag and just roll it again, pop it on there and then you're going to have a filled bun. Okay, so of course you could do that with anything. You could do, um, let's just say a meatball, already pre-cooked though, um, and then pop that inside. This, is, this dough can be used for sausage rolls. Again, with things like that, I know like a lot of people use sausage mince and I've done it with some of mine. We've got lamb kofta sausage rolls and things like that on the website and bolognese sausage rolls. I okay, so many of them are in different books and things. Um, but one of the things I actually like to do with a sausage roll is either use sausages and actually cook them first or use a, um, any kind of blend of mince that you want to do. So let's just say you wanted to do a chorizo one. So use a little bit of, uh, pork mince, beef mince, um, you know, some chili powder, like smoky chili powders and cumin, coriander, etc. And then I would actually like do it into a log in some cling film and then I'd poach it just a little bit. The thing again is like I said, it's just taking out some of those fats. I know a lot of people love the fats. <laughs> you could still use the water that you've poached in for other things if you like. Um, or if you cook it, you can use the, the fat or lard um, that comes from it for other cooking or serve it with it if you wanted to. But yeah, I just find for baking purposes, if you've ever made like fathead rolls before or something like that with like a fatty filling, it tends to be soft on the bottom. So this is a way to avoid it by pre-cooking or poaching uh, where you can uh, prior to actually baking it. So you can do that cool and you could even like roll out this where I've just done it now, make a sausage roll or a filling with something like that, um, pop it in the fridge, bake it when you want it, put it in the freezer, bake it when you want it, bake it even from frozen if you wanted to. Um, again, I would just cover, well not again, but I would cover it in foil and just cook it lower and longer if I was cooking from frozen. But if it's pre-cooked in the center, then it's only like thawing it out and cooking through. Great in the air fryer, I guess. Um, okay, so what's everyone done? I've made my first low carb bread this week, fantastic. Also made my second 
sticky ginger nut bread is my favorite. Yeah, I um, it was funny when I did that sticky ginger nut. I was trying to come up with some sort of nice loaf for Keto Loco. And we actually put it out to all of the followers on the main group, on the Mad Creations group. And it came, it just came back with this stinky, st- stinky, sticky ginger nut um, loaf as the choice, right? So I just put up a few different choices. And I think actually the other one was a raspberry and coconut, which I've just done in everyday keto. Because I come up with these ideas of different loaves that people can enjoy with a cuppa. Uh, or, you know, just have that that one little thing that you could have for afternoon tea that is easy to freeze, even eat f- frozen. Like if you haven't eaten uh, any of our breads, like our banana bread or the sticky ginger nut straight from the freezer, then you missed out too because <laughs> they're really nice while they're frozen. It takes you longer to eat it, but it's not like rock hard. Uh, but yeah, really lovely. But yeah, they're just something that's nice that, you know, if you have a friend or a family member come in and you want to sit down and have like something a little bit sweet um, with a cuppa, then you've got that available and they're so easy to slice and put into the freezer. So yeah, it's it's been a very, very popular loaf, that one. Um, and I think it was just mainly that, you know, there is a lot of people out there that, you know, want sticky date. And for me, that was like as close to it. I kind of worked on getting the consistency right. So it almost tasted like you got a, a sticky date loaf without any dates in it. Hi, Henry, all the way from Canada. What time is it in Canada now? Um, We are heading up to 20 to 4 in the afternoon now. Uh, Just walked my two toy poodles. Glorious autumn weather in um, Victoria. Yeah, I am. Like I said, when we went out, it was lovely today. It's it's been lovely all day. Dave's been working outside again. Um, But yeah, I think we're both a bit bit tired (laughs) after yesterday's walk. It was glorious yesterday. I went outside and actually I think I hung washing on the line. I'm like, oh, let's go to the beach and go for a walk. Um, do sneakily watching. <laughs> uh, sorry, just tuned in. What dough have you used? Oh, hi, Teresa. I just used the yeasted fathead. So um, it was a double batch. So I will be, for anyone that's bought Everyday Keto, if you watch me through the week, I did a Persian bread. And I will be sending out an email early this week with that recipe for everyone that's already got the book because you need the dough and that for it. Um, And yeah, it'll have a few more details just regarding the shipping dates and stuff like that of the book as well. So yeah, that will be there. Uh, I mean, I might even add this one. Um, Sorry, Mrs. Start, you mentioned a microwave. Is there a method without a microwave? I haven't had a microwave for years. Yes, Deborah. if you haven't made fat head yes yet, the best thing to do is just do, let's just imagine that's your pot. <laughs> what you do is you put your pot of water with, you know, low water over the stove, put in your Pyrex bowl, wear, you know, wear an oven mitt because you're going to be touching the bowl and just melt the cheese and cream cheese over the double boiler. Once it's all nice and soft and gooey, and mixed you can take it off and the rest is just done on the kitchen counter if you put your pyrex bowl straight down onto the counter it should cool down really quickly because of the heat transfer from the simmering water underneath to a cold bench top it's no less tricky than the other one you're just doing it just like if you're melting chocolate which i'm sure you do if you don't have a microwave i um i don't use microwaves for a lot of cooking Mine is actually one of those ones. It's called a bake assistant. It has multiple functions where it's like a steam oven and, and a baking oven and that as well too. But I do find it very simple for things like melting cheese, melting cheese and melting chocolate. So, it, yeah, just use, just use a Pyrex bowl over the top but not touching simmering water and you'll be fine. Uh, do you think yeasted fat head could be turned into hot cross buns? So, yes, Jane, you could easily do that. So... With the same dough that I've done today, all you would do is you'd add a little bit of sweetener or no sweetener if you wanted to. You could add a little bit of vanilla and add your spices. So I would add a little bit of things like if you've got speculus spice, that's beautiful or a gingerbread spice. But, you know, a little bit of nutmeg, cinnamon, uh, ginger, cardamom, a little bit of white pepper, um, clove, allspice, all of those sort of spices in. You can add a little bit of orange rind is always delicious in them. Uh, If you're somebody who likes a little bit of fruit, 
You can get the low sugar craisins or cra dried cranberries uh, by Ocean Spray. Just chop a few of those up in it or even uh, dehydrated blueberries or raspberries and stuff. A little bit of shaved of that in or make your own um, ch chunks out of lint chocolate or make your own out of cacao um, powder and buttons. Um, and then, yeah, you could just bake it. With the crosses, I have in the past, because I did do a recipe for them uh, with the old psyllium husk boiling water version uh, with a meringue cross, but you could do a keto royal icing, just substituting the icing sugar for a powdered sweetener and pipe it on with royal icing and then bake it or leave it off completely or do it with like a chocolate cross. Uh, so that choice is yours, but I would do it. I would still do it with the yeast. Um, you could add like vanilla and stuff like that. You might want to just add that little bit of sweetener, um, depending on what you're going to put in. So if you're going to put like all your cinnamon, nutmeg and stuff like that, maybe put a little bit of brown sweetener or something like that in it, um, which will give it a nice caramel kind of um, flavor to it and just take away a little bit from that yeasty bit. Um, but yeah, that'll be perfectly fine to do it that way. I was thinking about doing it and you can also do filled ones. So many years ago, I actually did a few different hot cross buns. This is pre-keto where, where I was just saying doing like a filled bun, you could actually put inside of them things like, like I was just saying, um, like an apple sort of filling. So you do like the choco with the apple spice, the same sort of seasoning that you put through the bun and a little bit of butter uh and sweetener and then cook that over like heat until it becomes nice and soft and caramelized cool it and then pop that inside um, another one i did with um, back in the days was with nutella and strawberries so nowadays you can get like the neutral light i think it is by lifestyle um sorry yeah lifestyle republic uh they have a a, a sugar-free nutella that's i think it's only one gram or two grams net carbs a little bit of that with a little bit of raspberry or sliced or diced strawberry inside the bun is delicious as well. And another one I did was just with, um, what did I do the other one? Oh no, the other one was with apple, but I actually put like toasted almonds and stuff like that in as well too. And then I made the crosses out of almonds. So, you know, like just the flaked almonds and you could put the cross on the top. So there's different ways that you could actually do that with um, a sweetened dough into a hot crust bun. I would do it about like... Um, a, a full recipe for me to put onto the website it takes a lot of time and I'm a bit late with Easter this year so I might get around there till next year um, but yeah you could definitely do that in for hot crust buns or a uh, finger bun and ice it on the top um, would be lovely in that as well too a another way to um, help make it become a little bit more bread like is if you do have our low carb bread ingredients just add one to two tablespoons of the oat fiber flour so it's not oat flour it's oat fiber and that will actually suck up a lot of the um, oil from the cheese and that as well too and make it more bready okay so there's another little tip if you want to make it into something easter and if you do please photograph it and, and put it on their group and tell us how it went uh, how about uh, about to make my first ciabatta a keto ciabatta or a real ciabatta? <laughs> or is it my keto ciabatta that was in uh, Fresh and Easy Keto? I think I put that one in. Yeah. Um, which is one of our top ones. Oh, hi, Linda. So you got some chocos today. So I've still got some that you gave me in the <laughs> um, back seal bag in the freezer. So yeah, like chocos is a good one to have around Christmas, uh, Christmas time, Easter time. But they work, it'll work wonders in the sort of scrolls and that as well too. So you could do still do um, like, a, you know, an apple cinnamon, but choco cinnamon kind of scroll with it. I would just, rather than just steam, I would always just saute with a little bit of, um, like I said, brown sweetener or gold sweetener in a pan with cinnamon and nutmeg and ginger, all the flavours that I like, cloves, cardamom, <laughs> all spice. Um, I like things a little bit spicy. From the new book of yours, I just downloaded the breads book. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that the ciabatta is in that one. That's a really popular recipe, by the way. Um, totally gluten-free and grain-free um, ciabatta, which is really lovely. I think that that recipe would also work really well for an Easter bread. So you could actually like, put that into, um, if you've got like one of those bread tins that's like just a little bit smaller than this, say, for instance. 
and they go higher and then you can glaze the top and you put a little bit of fruit in it if you wanted to. Um, do you think yeast at fat head? Oh, yeah, that, we just went through that one. Okay, I think I've answered all the questions. Unless anyone else has any other questions, for those of you who have just tuned in, this is what we made. Um, so we've made some scrolls. You can see that there's different sizes there that I've done. Um, but yeah, that sort of gives you a better indication of what they look like inside. And I'll pop up a, a photo later of what they look like after they're being baked. And coming up on the website soon will be some hamburger buns. Um, I've just done small ones. You can do them whatever size you want. Um, and I've done soft, chewy, garlic and herb uh, pretzels. So I don't want to break that one because that one looks really good. I'll use the one that burnt the most, but you can actually like see that it's... Um, yeah, sort of chewy like with a crispy outer and soft center, which is what the large pretzels are like. I know a lot of Aussies may not have seen large pretzels before, but yes, back in my cafe days, many, many, many years ago, I used to make pretzels quite a lot. It was one of our big things. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's about it for today. I think I've answered all the questions. And if you, anyone's got any last ones, now's the time. Um, and I know I've talked about it before, but I, the, I will get more details tomorrow as to when the book should be here for Everyday Keto. And I will, anyone that's already pre-purchased, I will send an email out to just the people that have pre-purchased with the recipe that I did earlier in the week with the Persian bread um, and an update on when the shipping will be around that will commence. Just remembering too that if you have ordered and you've ordered via standard post which is on your receipt that standard post takes seven to ten days after it begins to ship. So don't expect your books overnight especially if you live in WA. We're on New, in New South Wales and Newcastle so to go to the other side of Australia it's going to take some time. Okay but other than that I think I've got one new comment. Oh, all thanks. Thanks, Margaret. And yeah, have a lovely afternoon. I am going to clean up and have a little stock take of what's in my fridge for what I'm going to be making over the next couple of days and uh, working on some new recipes and updating some old ones. So hopefully you'll see a lot of new things coming up on the website soon. Okay, thanks for watching. And I hope that's helped some people that have been Having a few issues with the um, dough, but yeah, the main thing is mix it in your bowl till you turn it out and it won't be sticky at all. Okay, so I'll catch you soon and thanks again. Bye. Oops.